Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne. And uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, you'll come to really love me by the end of this video. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is an interview uh, where we're asking uh, God 25 questions. This is part of a book <laughs> series uh, that um, that uh, uh, we're answering 25 questions. Is this book two? Uh, I think uh, there's going to be book seven books in the series. They're going to get deeper and deeper subjects. Uh, this a subject of of this uh, uh, interview is going to be about uh, the bride of Christ, uh, which is something uh, not uh, many Christians attain to uh, in this life. And hopefully, this uh, video and uh, this chapter in the book uh, will will change that. <coughs> Matthew uh, doesn't know, uh, so this is God. Matthew doesn't know a lot, tremendous a lot, about uh, this subject. Uh, so uh, this uh, should be uh, informative to Matthew. Matthew's humble enough uh, to uh, be taught things and even things from us. Like he considers, he considers me uh, quite smart. And uh, he's surprised sometimes that me and the Holy Spirit are smarter than him in certain aspects. Uh, <clears throat> that sounds like pride, but it's really humility, you know. Humility is allowed to see a different option. So I'm here <clears throat> and I'm going to speak <clears throat> in this chapter. And I just want to open up uh, by saying hello to Lou. How are you? I'm good, Father. You always be smarter than us. You created us, so how can we be smarter than you? I don't think that's ever possible. Yeah, so. uh, Matthew's mother used to laugh at him. He had a chapter uh, in his prophetic evangelism made simple book where he had a whole chapter <clears throat> saying the Holy Spirit is smart. Um, and the emphasis of on the chapter was that the Holy Spirit knows when to convert a person. You don't need to lead a person into a sinner's prayer. Uh, the Holy Spirit is quite able to pick the opportunity and lead a person uh, to Christ at the opportune moment. And many times when you think it's meant to happen, it's not the right thing. And <clears throat> the, the, the uh, heading of the chapter is the Holy Spirit is smart and Matthew's mother uh, when she was editing the book um objected to that saying of course the holy spirit is smart like who are you to be saying he's not smart but uh many christians the message of the chapter was the chapter was really well uh, uh titled because the message is that average christians uh don't uh, think the holy spirit is smart they think it's their job to convert their friends and um uh, it's their job to emulate Jesus and demonstrate the character of Jesus and love their friends in an extraordinary way. It's the Holy Spirit's job to use that experience their friends are having to lead them to Christ. So um, so Matthew's mother is uh, listening to this and uh, she's sitting up the front of the stadium and uh, she's nodding her head saying once again Matthew's saying that uh god is smart and uh yeah she's she's beside herself with laughter and uh i don't mind uh matthew saying i'm smart you can it's like <clears throat> a famous cricketer uh when he comes off the field uh and goes to a bar to have a drink uh another famous cricketer walking up that he really admires walking up and saying that was a good uh innings mate uh, he did a really good job. Um, <clears throat> he takes uh, the compliment of another good cricketer really well because the other cricketer is, is a world-class cricketer and it means more to him. And uh, Matthew uh, is um, a, a dear friend of Jesus and uh, really close to us and understands uh, quite a bit about uh, the Christian faith. So it means more to have Matthew acknowledged that I'm smart and I'm capable. Uh, so what's the question? Yeah, the question is, how can I become your bride? <clears throat> so first of all, I want to start uh, this 
a chapter saying that um I really uh, love you to Lou and uh and uh Jesus uh himself uh is wooing you closer uh you've had a long uh, relationship uh with Jesus for people who didn't know uh to lose a husband passed away uh, last year but um, her husband for 16 or 17 years used to bring the voice of Jesus to Tulu all the time. She'd just be going about her day and her husband would start speaking and it would be Jesus. So she she's had <clears throat> very uh, intimate uh, relationship with Jesus and she's just learned to start to hear Jesus' voice for herself. And um just want to say uh, to you, uh, starting off uh, this uh, video um, that I, I'm really proud of you. You've become uh, who you were designed to be and uh, your whole life was designed uh, to prepare uh, Benjamin uh, for heaven and you did an extraordinary job doing that, uh, even being an, unaware that he was going to go. Um, if we had told you uh, that he was going to go, uh, it would cause fear and anxiety and it would have taken the joy out of your life saying he's only got six months left. And so we had to take him by surprise. But um, you are uh, someone uh, we want to uh, talk about and uh, use as an illustration uh, uh, in this uh, teaching uh, to share with people. So feel free to uh, give commentary on the things that I have to say. Um, I'm really uh, pleased with you and uh, you're uh, doing exactly everything uh, that's meant to be done and you're taking Matthew's life and output uh, to another level and uh, everyone in heaven uh, is happy with you and uh, you are also uh, in your sleep uh, go walking through heaven and people are flocking to you and saying hello and uh, you're being a very personable like but Michael Jackson or Princess Diana going out in public, people are a really thing. And uh, you're asleep, so you're not aware that you're doing it, but the people of heaven like to meet you too. So um, so how how do you become uh, the bride of Christ? Uh, there's uh, four, uh, four stages of being a Christian. Uh, uh, Jesus can be your saviour, which is, like the stage, uh, the thief on the cross uh, was, uh, remember me when you die, when you come into your kingdom. Uh, he was the saviour state and uh, he he uh, went to paradise and there's a, a paradise, uh, a, like an earth-like uh, um, environment outside of the gates of heaven and uh You've basically gone to heaven, but you're not through the gates of heaven uh, into the first realm of heaven. Um, and uh, you can live there and be quite happy and it'd be just like earth, only better. Um, and uh, you uh, may uh, hear teachings and uh, progress uh, through the gates. But uh, having Jesus as saviour uh, takes you to that uh, first position. You can either... Uh, be in the paradise or you can be uh, in the first realm of heaven, but it's just the lowest realm, uh, having Jesus as saviour. Um, when 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 you hear Jesus' commandments and uh, you understand his teachings, uh, then uh, uh, and you start to obey them and apply them in your life, uh, then, uh, like John 14, the disciples had walked with Jesus for three and a half years and been doing ministry and healing and uh, preaching the gospel. <clears throat> They'd been working with Jesus for a number of years, doing everything Jesus taught and being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, they, um, they become friends of Jesus. No longer do I call you servants, but now I, I call you friends. Um, so uh, most most of the Christian uh, church is in saviour mode. Uh, they they call Jesus a saviour and Jesus isn't their Lord. Uh, Jesus isn't telling them 
uh, what to do and leading them each day to not hearing from the Holy Spirit, uh, directing them each day. Now, everyone can hear from the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to everyone and uh, Holy Spirit speaks to Elon Musk more than most Christians and he's receptive to what he hears in his intuition. So the Holy Spirit can speak to everyone, both Christians and non-Christians, through their intuition, having an intuitive uh, thought. But um, when uh, you progress uh, from saviour uh, to friend, uh, you're used to uh, being directed by the Holy Spirit and uh, you understand uh, the teachings of Jesus and you're practically applying them. So uh, most of the church is at saviour mode uh, and then uh, when you come to understand what Jesus taught and you obey that for a number of years, you become friend. And uh, uh, being a friend of Jesus is a big thing. Uh, if you open up your receptors, you open up uh, your ability to, uh, to hear uh, from God and have two-way conversations with God, uh, Jesus can share some intimate things with you as a friend. Uh, you can imagine... Um, you imagine everyone knows uh, Donald Trump, and I use uh, this example a lot, but everyone in the world knows Donald Trump. He's one of the most <clears throat> iconic uh, people in the world, and many people knew him when he was on his reality show, The, uh, the Apprentice. Uh, but uh, he, as he ascended in power and we allowed and chose him for the powerful seat of president, he became a lot more popular and his name is known really well. And a lot of people think they know a lot about Donald Trump and you can watch uh, his conventions and you can watch when he speaks and you can read books about him, you can read books that he's written. And you, you can come to think that you really know Donald Trump uh, really well. Um, but um, but being his friend is some something different. <clears throat> He was flying into your city if he was flying into your city and uh, he's going to have a couple of spare hours. He's, his staff may reach out to you and say, Donald uh, wants to see you for lunch. Uh, can uh, you meet him at this restaurant? Or he may call you on uh, your mobile phone and say, uh, do you want to meet for lunch? That's what Donald would do as a friend. Uh, you'd have this one-on-one -on -one time with him. So... Uh, when you become a friend of Jesus, it's more than just obeying him. There's uh, a next stage of understanding, a next stage of uh, relationship. Uh, when you've obeyed Jesus quite a lot, uh, intuitively uh, uh, obeyed the Holy Spirit and the leadings of the Holy Spirit and uh, the teachings of Jesus, when you've done that for a number of years, and uh, you're used to taking every thought captive that we've talked about, and you get proficiency in ordering your day and ordering each decision based on what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. It takes to a further stage where you're being led by the Holy Spirit in each thing you're going to do, each thing you do. Uh, this uh, very chapter was led by the Holy Spirit, uh, Matthew was giving inspiration to uh, wake up and uh, make a coffee and uh, do uh, this uh, teaching. Matthew was led by the Holy Spirit to ask uh, Tulu what the question was going to be, and uh, he mentally prepared himself uh, to bring this message. And this message, uh, everything I say is uh, being directed uh, by the Holy Spirit's power. Uh, so... <clears throat> Matthew's uh, really used to, like, tremendously used to being led with every action by the Holy Spirit. The only actions that Matthew isn't led by the Holy Spirit is when he's sinning, but even in the midst of sinning, sometimes Matthew is led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so much of his life is led by the Holy Spirit. And when you get to a stage where your life is surrendered and you've died to self and uh, you die daily, like uh, Paul said, and you're continually putting down the flesh and doing what the Holy Spirit says. You become a son of God, and as mentioned in Romans, uh, Matthew doesn't know uh, the chapter, but he, he that uh, is led by the Holy Spirit, these are the sons of God. So uh, the sons of God 
uh, are rare uh, in Christian circles. Matthew estimates that uh, only two out of a hundred uh, Christians are, are being led by the Holy Spirit and actively knowing they're being led. Um, you know, uh, you could uh, intuitively know the rules of your company uh, and and uh, and be functioning the way your company. Uh, wants you to function, but you may have never uh, read the charter of your company. You've just got this overall flavor of the culture of your company. But if if uh, the boss came to you and started uh, sharing with you things that you specifically have to do, uh, that's another level of understanding. And so when someone uh, reaches the stage where they're a son of God, uh, they're they're uh, becoming uh, very much like God and uh, very close to Jesus, very submitted. And it's like the manager of uh, the company is coming to give uh, personal instruction. I hope uh, you understand that. Uh, from uh, you, you can reach another stage as a son of God that uh, that Tulu is uh, where uh, you. Um, in in ancient times, uh, a woman uh, would uh, be a virgin when she got married, and surprise, surprise, you can actually be a virgin uh, when you get married. Um, and uh, they used to take a cloth uh, into uh, the wedding chamber, um, and uh, that was evidence uh, for the, the um, for the bride, the uh, father of the bride. Uh, for the father of the groom, uh, that uh, the world was the girl was a virgin. Uh, they used to put the cloth under the vagina, and and uh, when the girl's hymen was broken, they used to collect the blood, and that was evidence. Uh, that uh, that was after the bride was married, and uh, she she's already married and committed, and there was this fervor. Uh, evidence that she was a virgin and the marriage mightn't be cancelled or annulled um, uh, when that evidence came forth. Um, so this evidence of being the bride of Christ uh, and there's a certain st stage where uh, you enter the wedding chamber and uh, you have like uh, like uh, spiritual sex with Jesus. It's like a spiritual intimacy where you reach this uh, uh, really uh, special grace of of being intimate. Uh, you you're beyond a friend. You're beyond understanding what Jesus thinks. You're beyond uh, doing everything and being led by the Holy Spirit like Jesus was when he was on earth. That's what made Jesus so extraordinary. That everything he did was led by the Holy Spirit and uh, and and. Saints in the higher realms in heaven are totally led by the Holy Spirit. Um, so Jesus, uh, you become a like Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> then there comes a certain stage uh, when you're a son of God, uh, where you're being led uh, every day by uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, puts it on your heart to enter into like a deeper deeper relationship with Jesus where Jesus is your everything and it's not just Jesus is my savior and you're gushing thank you for the cross but you're actually a laid down lover of Jesus uh you're constantly and consistently laying down your life for the will of the Holy Spirit to be accomplished and uh the closer you uh draw to Jesus the closer you want to become to Jesus <clears throat> I guess it's just like seeing a couple, uh, an older couple uh, in a living room, uh, sitting and watching TV. There, there might be conversation going on, but they're conversing with each other and having a meeting of minds while they watch a TV show. And from time to time, there'll be a comment <laughs> said, but the comment will only be confirming what both of them already are saying. Someone will be speaking out loud what they're both thinking. And there's just this high level of intimacy and interaction between a couple that's been together for so long. Uh, so 
when you enter this a higher stage of relationship, which only a percentage of uh, people uh, become uh, who become Christians, you just enter this stage where you're walking and talking to Jesus, and you've got this higher level uh, relationship where you might not often have to uh, talk to each other, but you have this understanding uh, between uh, both of you, and uh, you're walking the same way. You're walking in unity, just like Melania Trump uh, walks with Donald and walks in unity, unity uh, with him and supports him. Uh, she doesn't often speak out. She doesn't often comment on what Donald is doing. But uh, from the few times she spoke, uh, speaks, uh, you get uh, the impression that she fully supports her husband. And no matter what's going through the press with uh, with uh, Donald uh, sleeping with a porn star when he was married to her. She doesn't comment, and uh, she fully supports him, <clears throat> and uh, she forgives his transgressions. Um, and you can reach a stage with Jesus where you've developed uh, this oneness. Uh it says in uh, John 15 that I'm the vine, you are the branches, and... Uh, and uh, that uh, you're to bear fruit, and uh, but uh, you can become, uh, you can become <laughs> so one one with Jesus that, like in John seventeen, uh, you you and I are one. Just as uh, uh, you, uh, it says, it talks about this oneness that uh, that uh, the people of God become one with Jesus and one with me and we're all one together and you can <clears throat> you can become so one with Jesus uh through spiritual intimacy that you become your own vine and you become your own tree and uh uh, uh you're able to sustain fruit uh in 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 yourself as as your own tree and you become like Jesus um they they said uh, of the disciples that uh you know they, they realized that they weren't educated and hadn't uh trained to be formal rap formal formal rabbis they weren't acting like formal rabbis but uh they um made the comment that they'd been with Jesus and uh that uh, the impression of Jesus the marks of Jesus' personality, the marks of, of Jesus' suffering, the marks of uh, Jesus' submission and uh, holiness and obedience was seen in the disciples. They they were little mini Jesuses <clears throat> that people could recognize that walking with Jesus was uh, more important and more beneficial uh, uh, to a person than a Bible college or or uh, studying uh, to be a rabbi. And uh, it was a made a comment that uh, the disciples in the early days had been with Jesus. And uh, you can uh, uh, live uh, today uh, and be with Jesus and uh, entering in uh, to become uh, the bride of Christ. Uh, you become like a special <coughs> set apart power person and... Uh, there's always a talk uh, in uh, the scriptures uh, or there's many uh, references uh, of of the remnant and there's always been a remnant, a special people, a special portion of people that are special to God in Israel and uh, special to God uh, in uh, life. And... <clears throat> When you become the bride of Christ, when you've entered into that bedchamber, when uh, you've developed intimacy and started to walk with Jesus as his bride, uh, you become that remnant. You become those uh, people that God uh, sets apart. And uh, when uh, Jesus returns in a pre-tribulation rapture and he wants to take his special people off the world um, before he um, um thrusts the world into a tribulation. Uh, he's special people, his bride, his remnant, he'll take off the face of the earth. Um, so um, if you want to become part of 
the special people if you want to become part of a God's chosen people uh, and become the remnant. Uh, uh, you take the steps uh, to becoming the bride of Christ. And so the number one step uh, that uh, if you're listening uh, to this uh, and uh, it gets repeated so often uh, in uh, the things that Matthew brings forth is you need to have have a list of the 50 commandments of Jesus, have an understanding how to obey them and uh, have an understanding of the parables of Jesus and uh, and uh, be able to obey them. And uh, as you walk uh, in everything Jesus taught and apply that in your life, uh, you'll uh, be used to, become used to taking every thought captive according to what uh, Jesus taught and the early church uh, taught uh, in the letters of the epistles. And as you take every thought captive, you'll go through a process of uh, getting so close and intimate to the Holy Spirit that you become a son of God. And from that a positional stance of uh, being a son of God, uh, you can go further and develop closer intimacy with Jesus and become more than his friend, but his bride and part of him and uh, become uh, not just a branch, but uh, the bride of Christ and, and the actual uh, vine uh, yourself. And you become a, like a duplicate of Jesus and you walk in oneness and a union with him uh, in everything you say and do. Uh, would Jesus say that? Would Jesus do that? Mm -hmm. uh, you won't have to ask those questions uh, you'll have the mind of Christ and be so intimately connected with Jesus that you'll just act like him, think like him, react like him, and uh, people will meet a uh, Jesus Christ in you. So um, have you got any uh, commentary uh, for what I've said to Lou? Yes, I do. Thank you, Father, for the kind words you did say at the beginning. I'm humbled by everything that you said, and I really appreciate it because I didn't think my life, anything could come out of my life, especially the way my journey has been. And your God, your whole is full of surprises. So there are a lot of things that are still surprising me about my life. And coming back to Ben, thank you for clarifying that, that the reason why you took him away suddenly was so that I'm not sorrowful or going into depression because I knew he was going to leave so that keeps me at peace as well because for a long time father I just felt maybe I did something wrong and that was why Ben needed to go but I thank you for for you've been keeping me and I really thank God for how you've held me through the, the past one year and I know that you still continue to do so for the remaining years I've got to live on her Looking at the bride that you've spoken about today, I really like the way you structured it. That the first thing is you need to be a savior. And a lot of Christians are at that savior state where they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord. And then mm -hmm. we don't think about it. And that means majority of Christians just get stagnant at that stage of just having Christ as their savior. But when it comes to being a friend of Jesus or being led by the Holy Spirit or being sons of God, this is where a lot of Christians do lack or this is where we do not progress into that stage. And I guess, Father, I wanted to say, would that be as a lack of um, lack of courage or lack of knowledge that we don't know what to do, that we needed to step forward, not just being stagnant at that severe phase, but we need to be able to move on to the next phase. Because looking at my life, yes, I think because Jesus did speak to me a lot throughout my journey, I was able to follow his instructions and I still failed in a lot of places because I, I knew Jesus would keep reminding me of doing the same thing over and over again because it was quite difficult sometimes for me to follow those instructions. But I never knew that I was growing from knowing Jesus as my savior to being his friend, to being led by the Holy Spirit. That wasn't clear to me until the way you've kind of explain it now illustrated it in your response to how one can be a bride of jesus 
So I'm thinking probably a lot of Christians might be willing to move forward from seeing Jesus as their savior, but probably they lack knowledge or they're scared to take that next step of taking Jesus as more than their savior, but as their Lord. So Father, do you mind explaining that? Uh, so uh, uh, many uh, Christians, you, you're right in, in saying uh, it's not so much them being scared, but it's a lack of knowledge, understanding uh, that uh, you can walk at that level. Uh, there's many people born uh, into darkness who who have uh, demonic uh, bondages uh, in their life and uh, things that their parents used to do, uh, uh, born into a elite or Illuminati a witchcraft circles that uh, when they're born and their genetics, uh, the the curses and uh, the abilities are inherently in that person's life. So they grow up uh, to uh, become evil and uh, gifted in many uh, dark arts. Um, mm. It's like a natural thing, but uh, being like Christ and having the gifts of uh, the spirit and uh, moving like Christ and obeying uh, the whims of the Holy Spirit doesn't come naturally. Uh, to a person like uh, someone who, who grew up uh, in darkness and uh, doesn't come genetically. Uh, people uh, pe people who've had, pa well, it does come genetically. Uh, you can see the same thing where there's uh, been three generations of pastors and uh, a, a male uh, comes forth and becomes a pastor or a prophet uh, just like uh, generations of pastors. So uh, the generational lineages and the generational blessings and giftedness uh, comes down uh, both in evil and, and righteousness sake, but uh, the, 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 uh, this day's pastor who has three uh, generations of pastors, he's still got to make the active choice to go to Bible school. He's got to make the active choice to step forth and be a pastor. Uh, so um, uh, many things uh, are assumed um, in, in the Gospels, but uh, they're, they're not uh, actively uh, described. And uh, uh, you probably have, have never heard uh, the progress uh, into becoming the bride of Christ before, uh, like I just explained, and Matthew was taught this, over a few years uh, with revelation after revelation. And uh, uh, it's sad that uh, that uh, the uh, the Christian church don't teach and uh, don't uh, teach uh, really uh, widely uh, from revelation. They just teach from man's doctrines and man's understandings. And uh, so people, the sheep are left blind and uh, the blind are led by blind leaders uh, into the ditch. Uh, so it's important that uh, that uh, people understand and have the ability to say, yes, I choose uh, to uh, learn uh, what Jesus taught and I choose to obey what he taught and uh, progress uh, to the point uh, where every decision of mine is uh, being made uh, by the Holy Spirit, and then I, I know I progress uh, into being a son of God. But so much of uh, uh, this progress is hampered uh, by lack of knowledge, and there's little knowledge in the church, and that that's a shame. It's not really uh, people's fault. It's uh, it's uh, Matthew has been raised uh, to be a teacher has anointing of a teacher so uh we uh speak to him uh the holy spirit speaks to him in revelation and understanding and uh he brings forth and uh, teaches those things but there's many things uh, that matthew knows that uh his knowledge uh comes out uh, as he teaches in his books and he possesses tremendous amounts of knowledge and it just has to have a subject uh, to be addressed for that knowledge to come forth. He's got many stories, many much experience, uh, but um, he doesn't uh, fully understand uh, the role of Bride of Christ. Uh, he's just 
pretty much uh, coming to understand the role of a son of God, uh, but um, he uh, isn't knowledgeable about everything, nor does he claim to have uh, knowledge about everything. Uh, he can be a hurt and offended uh, by people's words and uh, has to constantly walk uh, in forgiveness over what people say and how people react to him. Uh, but um, when you become uh, the bride of Christ, uh, and uh, if you ever attain uh, the role of bride of Christ, uh, you reach this really uh, good stage where uh, Jesus starts sharing his thoughts and his concerns and his worries uh, with you, and uh, and uh, you start to walk one on one uh, like uh, that married couple in the living room uh, watching TV together. You might not always talk to each other and uh, interact with each other, but you're both being led uh, by the same Holy Spirit and you have uh, an understanding uh, between each of you and you're walking in the same direction and enjoying uh, the same scenery uh, together. And uh, when you have a shared experience like a sunset, uh, is a very good experience and really nice to watch or a sunrise is really nice to watch. But when you've got a partner there or a friend there or a family member there, or someone special to you, uh, a sunset is even more special because it's a shared experience. And when you become the bride of Christ, you have a shared experience with Christ uh, with the world, uh, each person that you meet and each circumstance that uh, you find yourself in, it's a shared experience. It's you and Christ uh, sharing that experience. And uh, so uh, I hope uh, to, that I've made it sound uh, really attractive because that's where uh, Jesus would prefer all his uh, believers to be. Um, it's quite okay just to be a believer. It's quite okay uh, to be in church for 30 years and not ever really present, uh, progressed. Uh, it's quite okay uh, for you to be a believer and have no understanding of what Jesus taught. That's where most people are. And uh, the world uh, goes on and uh, the world uh, survives and uh, the church is uh, doing an all right job uh, in the world. Uh, but uh, I, I'm here uh, sh sharing uh, face to face uh, with the world and uh, appealing to the world, appealing uh, to the Christian church to come up higher, come, come, come and view this like, uh, like uh, John got the message, uh, come here uh, in the book of Revelation. And he went into a vision and talked about the future of the world and the future of uh, how things are going to be done. There was this, uh, uh, Admin, admonition uh, come up here and I'm like God of the universe and I'm the God of creation and I'm the God of uh, Christianity and uh, I'm saying uh, don't settle for uh, your saviour relationship or don't uh, settle for your friendship with Jesus relationship but come up here come to something higher Thank you Father another thing that came to my mind as you were talking is I guess sometimes people are scared to pay the price of what it takes to be your bride. Because for instance, you're probably going to be lonely. You have to separate yourself from the world. You may not have a lot of friends. Your life might have to be different. Like what Matthew is experiencing, that he doesn't have friends. And I can say I don't have friends as well, apart from Matthew and few other people like Gabriel that God has sent into my life. So I it takes the courage and I hope people know that even though you might be lonely, but there is nothing better than being a friend of Christ or being a friend of saints in heaven. So that might be another issue as well, why people are willing to step into that. Yeah, so many people uh, choose not to obey because uh, obedience is, is a hard thing and they've got to lay down their life and they've got to die to self and... Uh, so many people, it's a human, a fleshy condition that comes naturally to people to be selfish and look out for themselves. And 
the idea of dying to self, the idea of laying down their life, the, the idea of taking everything they have and offering it uh, to other people and going to buy uh, the, the land with treasure or uh, being a person uh, who has a whole lot of uh, expensive pearls and going to sell all those pearls to possess Christ, uh, giving up uh, your whole life and giving up your friends and giving up what you want to do and what you're born to do and giving that up for Christ and laying that down and sacrificing things uh, is a hard decision. And uh, I imagine uh, if uh, it ever happened, like uh, people teach that uh, if you deny the mark of the beast, uh, they're going to uh, use a guillotine and cut your head off. If If that's true, it would take quite a decision to refuse the mark of the beast and choose Christ and choose uh, Jesus over things like that. But, um, uh, and, and it's, it's like uh, the modern church uh, don't want to face the chopping block. It's like they, they choose uh, to follow their way and man's ways and they don't want to uh, willingly surrender uh, their, their life to hardship or trial or anything that's pretty hard and, Jesus' way is the way of love, and sometimes love is, is costly and expensive. Uh, it's a, a lot easier to uh, moan and, and gossip about someone than actually um, approach them and ask for forgiveness and turn the other cheek and bless them and pray for them. And uh, so Jesus' ways are countercultural and uh, against what uh, human nature wants to do um, and uh, but uh, I, I truly uh, say that uh, even if uh, to Lou you've just uh, got uh, two or three friends uh, you're in a better position you're doing more for God and even if uh, just e even if just five people uh, read this book and you know three of them uh, really change your life and uh, make uh, decisions to uh, pursue Christ and pursue pursue his teachings and are really touched and changed. And uh, even if this book just acts, adds, acts as a catalyst for 20% of the people that read it, even if you just change uh, 10 lives, it'll be worth it. And, uh, and uh, so many people just aren't changed. So many people in the Christian church just have no knowledge and have no understanding, but I'm a profound God and I can speak in profound ways and uh, I can speak uh, and break down what's profound into simplicity and practical steps to take. And uh, I, um, if, if you're reading this, uh, uh, be encouraged that uh, Matthew has uh, teachings on uh, the um, on uh, the uh, parables of Jesus and teachings on the commandments of Jesus, and you can learn uh, what they mean. And uh, Tolu, you've read those books and you're starting to uh, walk in those steps, and uh, you're already. Uh, the bride of Christ, even if uh, you don't recognize it, uh, you're very uh, well led by the Holy Spirit and you actually uh, catch Matthew by surprise so often that uh, you confirm and come up with ideas and are led to actually do things that surprises Matthew. And it's like a real surprise for Matthew to interact with a friend that's uh, been spoken to uh, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so that he doesn't have to do everything himself and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you are constantly coming up with ideas that uh, he he could have come up with. And it's like uh, he's been walking up a hill for years carrying a load and it's like you've come along and uh, said, give us that and you've shouldered the load and started to carry the load up yourself. And it, it's like he's... Uh, given you the whole load and you, you've said you've been doing that for years, uh, let me take over. And uh, you seem to have fallen in a step and uh, be carrying the load better than he was carrying the load uh, himself. And uh, so uh, he's very happy and I'm very happy. And uh, and uh, 
Uh, so uh, have you got uh, any uh, practical steps or any suggestions or anything you've done in your life uh, to become uh, close to uh, Jesus like you are? I think uh, what really helped me is having Ben by my side because Ben was the first person that preached to me. I got saved um, when I was a few months away from turning 18. And he came to me and preached the message of Jesus to me. Even though I've heard the message of salvation <laughs> several times, I've never taken notice of it until Ben told me about Jesus. And having him by my side all the way from that has really, really been helpful because it was like we're holding each other's hands and Jesus speaking to me a lot really did help me because there were places I needed to make hard decisions and I had to be hated by a lot of people because my family don't understand me. They don't understand why I take some decisions and it's very difficult for you to tell them that that's what Jesus has told me to do. So I made up my mind that I was not going to place any woman being, that the person I was going to place was God. And that really helped me. And I was willing to take whatever comes with it. I was willing to take whatever people say. I didn't care because I wasn't living for them. So, but I guess that came from Jesus speaking to me. Having this intimate relationship with Jesus really did help so much. And because Ben was really well advanced than myself, he was able to encourage me as well. So I guess people having a friend in their life, like Matthew or someone that they could, like a spiritual mentor or friend can really, really help. Someone that is already walking that path can make that journey much easier and lesser for them because sharing the load sometimes it's so easier than just you running that journey by yourself because that was the first thing that scared me father when ben went home i was like that's my only friend that was the person that used to encourage me that was the person that jesus spoke to so ben meant so much to me more, more than just an husband so i was thinking how was i going to survive the rest of my years without him so and then matthew came into the scene and he was able to hold my hands as well along that journey so People should not be scared of just align, just they should just open up to the Holy Spirit to lead them to someone. And I think I've always had people in my life, even when I was in I institution in Nigeria, I remember I used to have friends that we pray together every day. So having that person by your side, it might be your partner, it might be your friend. I think that really does help. That's helped me a lot. Also, just listening to the Holy Spirit is is gonna be as if your intuition is speaking to you, and then just taking those step by step things that the Holy Spirit is telling you. Just get used to listening to the Holy Spirit. Get used to annoying people. Get used to just pleasing the Father. That you don't care what other people say about you. I never knew that I could put myself on YouTube because I'm an extremely private person. But it, when Matthew came to me, I told myself that that is the work of God and I have to be uncomfortable doing things that I would not normally do. So that has really helped me as well. And I, Jesus was very, very strict with me as well. I cried a lot of times. So it's going to be difficult. People should expect times that they will be frustrated, that they will cry, but they should look at the reward that the reward pays more than the things of this world. So I would say that really helps as well. And giving as well does help that you need to be more given. Like you need to, like money is kind of the easiest thing that I find giving, giving your time as well. A lot of times my days are consumed by the work of God. I spend majority of my time doing things of heaven that I don't even have time for myself or very little to for my children. So I feel that just allowing God just to direct your day should be, and do not beat yourself down. I beat myself down. I've kind of judged myself over and over. And from speaking with the saints, I've been able to understand that the journey of Christianity is far more easier than I thought. And everyone is not looking at me in that judgmental way, but they are rather looking at me in the loving way because they know the journey is not easy and I'm just doing whatever I can do. So if we can just relax, I think that we just take the load of it. We just take the burden of trying to be perfect because I love being perfect. And I think that does stress me a lot of times. So I'm learning and less religion as well. Stepping away from a lot of religious activities, even though I used to go to church and I did have a lot of religion in me, but 
I wasn't that person that really fell in love with church. I, I rather fell in love with whatever Jesus tells me. So I, but maybe because a lot of the conversation I had with Jesus was mainly about me submitting to Ben and obeying him. So I never saw the bigger aspect in terms of what serving God is and I'm having that now. So I guess people just need to step away from things that they feel that needs to be done this way. I need to read the Bible. If it's not working for them, then they need to get to a stage where they say, okay, I've tried this for so many years, it's not working. Why not try this new way that Matthew has been preaching? Why not try this new way that saints has been preaching? They should just open their heart, open it up for change and allow the Holy Spirit to lead them. And uh, Matthew, have you got another thing to add? I think that's what I can think now. And being obedient to the Holy Spirit, reading a lot of Matthew's books as well, will really help you to understand a new te theology in the way that God expects you to serve him, not necessarily man's theology that we, we've kind of got accustomed to over the years. I I really appreciate uh, what you have uh, to say. Uh, this is God speaking. Um, really appreciate what you had to say. Uh, there was so much uh, in that uh, to uh, give a comment to, uh, but I, I really know uh, what you've said is makes uh, what I've been saying so much more relatable. Um, and uh, if uh, you need a friend, uh, you can reach out to Tulu or you can reach out to Matthew. And uh, uh, if uh, you need a mentor, uh, uh, they can pray for you or even um, uh, become someone uh, that uh, becomes friendly with you and uh, directs you and leads you um i i uh was so happy uh to share my heart like that uh jesus uh needs a bride and uh we need to work through a bride and in these last days uh we're uh going to raise up a remnant uh to be the army that takes the word of god out into the streets and uh saves the last generations of people before uh, Jesus returns. Uh, so um, I'm really uh, pleased uh, with what we've discussed today. I'm very uh, happy uh, with you, uh, Matthew. I'm very happy uh, with uh, what you've said and who you've become, Tolu. And uh, I um, want to uh, really thank uh, the listeners and uh, the people who've read uh, so far. Uh, I want to thank you for listening uh, if uh, you've listened to this video to this point and you're a member of YouTube, please be encouraged and uh, like the video. If uh, there's been things that have been said and you've been encouraged, uh, please comment on the video. If you're a regular listener to Matthew's videos and you're one of his supporters, uh, I encourage you to uh, make a comment. Uh, if uh, this is new to you, and uh, this is the first video you've seen of Matthew. I encourage you to uh, subscribe to his channel and uh, uh, follow him. Um, I pray that uh, you're blessed and encouraged. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful life. God bless.